Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Reinforce uh, 2024. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. Yeah, if you can uh, just give me a thumbs up. All right, perfect. Uh, welcome to this session. Um, we are talking about a very transformative technology, generative AI, and I think one of the key questions that we continuously get from customers is, uh, you know, how to decipher this field, uh, what are some of the key objectives that the security teams can uh, take out of this, uh, so we put together some of the key outlines, especially things that where we believe that the security persona and or uh, you, know, you yourself and the security teams can leverage. Uh, so in this session, uh, we'll talk about five key ways uh, that generative AI can enhance uh, cybersecurity. Uh, my name is Himanshu Verma. I lead the team of our worldwide security specialists uh, at Amazon. We help customers orchestrate our native AWS security services and partner tools. And I'm joined with... Uh, Marshall Jones. I'm a security specialist SA on Manchu's team. Uh, so focused on the uh, go-to-market activities for our native AWS security services. Perfect. Thanks, Marshall. So we'll walk you through um, you know, the agenda today. Uh, how can we help customers um, start securely? And then as the development process goes on, how can the security teams orchestrate automation or leverage Gen AI in AWS security services and tools to uh, you know, get outcomes uh, for their uh, development teams and business teams? We'll talk about some of the key elements, uh, both from starting from the development persona into management and governance tools, and then also security automation. So let's dive into this uh, really quickly in this uh, short session. There are three key ways that we believe that customers should be thinking about when the topic emerges for Gen AI and security, because this is a pretty broad concept and broad topic. Uh, so the three key pillars that we've distilled this information in is, number one is security of generative AI, which means uh, as you are leveraging tools or your business teams are leveraging Gen AI tools, which could be things like you know, Amazon Bedrock. Uh, as you know, like Amazon has uh, three stacks of Gen AI offerings, starting from the silicon into the middle layer, where we have uh, you know, foundational models, language models, and then enterprise applications. Uh, that's pretty much the three categories that you'll see some of the other vendors offering uh, Gen AI capabilities as well. So for security teams, I think the most important aspect is how to secure Gen AI workloads. Uh, the second one is around Gen AI for security, which is how can security teams leverage generative AI for automation, for uh, productivity, as well as for helping the business teams. Uh, this is the topic that we are going to dive a little bit deeper into today. And then the third one, which there are plenty of sessions here in this uh, forum that you'll hear about, is how to secure from certain threats and the new landscape that opens up with generative AI. You know, these could be like things like prompt injections, hallucinations, etc. So you'll hear several topics in the conference uh, today and over the course of the next three days that will walk you through, uh, you know, some of these use cases. What we'll focus on is how can security teams leverage an AI, especially with AWS services and tools, to automate and be more productive. So first and foremost, let's talk about starting securely, and this happens at the development lifecycle. So whether it's security teams developing tools and or business teams writing code, uh, what we believe is that security starts right there and should start the right way. Uh, so the way we do that is that uh, Amazon Q for uh, developers is something which includes some of the generative AI capabilities. When we talk about uh, testing as well as validation of unit tests and or secure coding, uh, this is a key critical component of the software development lifecycle. And this is where developers can leverage the built-in Gen AI capabilities where Amazon Q provides this enhanced experience to developers uh, such that um, you know, either detecting uh, some of the well-known vulnerabilities in code. So if you're a developer and call, calling open source libraries, uh, you want to know exactly right there, right then, that you know, there could be a potential vulnerabilities. Uh, so Q includes some of these code scanning capabilities powered by AWS security services like Amazon Inspector that can not only highlight these vulnerabilities, but can also provide the development teams either with test code and or recommendations within the interface to replace that code and address those vulnerabilities. So this is one way 
that the development teams can actually start right uh, and ensure that they can test their codes and scan their codes. Uh, also, we find this uh, capability not only in uh, the queue interface, uh, but we also have provided this capability in um, Lambda code scanning with Amazon Inspector. Um, earlier this year, we actually launched Inspector's new feature for not only uh, finding vulnerabilities in instances, container images, and Lambda code scanning functions, but also provided the ability to, within that finding, provide the ability for the developers to replace that code with a recommendation of the code that addresses that vulnerability. So typically, this, would, this was a process where the security teams will find the vulnerability, send out a ticket or a workflow to the development team, and now we can shorten that time frame and or make that user experience much better, leading to a better outcome for our development teams. The second area where we see is around management and governance tools. This is where we want to make sure that uh, as you know, your AWS workloads are growing, accounts or uh, workloads within those accounts, how are those control policies and how are those configurations uh, shaping up? Most of the times, uh, customers are using tools like AWS Config uh, that provides control assessments or control evaluations over a period of time. Uh, you can also define your own custom controls, which is a key management and governance tool. And then also, there are tools like Security Hub that can provide you the aggregation of these controls into standards to evaluate those controls. In AWS Config, we've now actually added uh, a generative AI-powered capability that allows uh, the development teams to actually go in and easily use natural language programming to look at a resource timeline on those policies. So in this example, like if you want to just ask in a natural language format, like what are some of the EL, uh, ELB volumes that you might have where you want to uh, find out whether they are encrypted or not encrypted, that's an abstract uh, definition that earlier developers would have to go in and write complex SQL queries or know how to run those SQL queries. But now you can do that with natural language. And not only does it provide you the results, but it also gives you a timeline on the resource that when was the encryption policies implemented or how have they changed over a period of time. So this is another example of how in the management and governance uh, phase, also developers can leverage it to ensure that their configurations and controls are in place. Moving on, uh, when we talk about the security persona is where I'll hand it over to Marshall to uh, dive deeper into some of the automation when it relates to either security operations or security outcomes. All right, so let's jump into this. The first one that we're going to talk about is Amazon Detective uh, Summaries. So if you're not too familiar with Amazon Detective, essentially it has a graph technology in the background that's relating a bunch of different resources together so that you can investigate things more easily. For example, if you're just looking at a CloudTrail call, it's an API call, you're mashing a bunch of things together. In the Detective console, you can see all these things like visually this IAM role created, this EC2 instance, us communicating with these different IP addresses, that was also communicating with these other EC2 instances. And then Detective Finding Groups is essentially a way to bring a bunch of different findings together, a bunch of different resources together, understand what's related. So a single guard duty finding with this instance actually is the same IP address associated with a different finding from another instance. So kind of this, this is an overall security issue and bringing these things together. It's maybe not so obvious uh, right away, but these things can be uh, complicated, right? There can be a lot of different components to an overall security issue, and one of the pieces of generative, generative AI technology that's built into this is the finding summary. So helping you understand what is kind of that executive summary of what's going on here before you dive into the, the given details. So next, security analytics. Um, who doesn't like building dashboards just like myself? Uh, if you've ever used QuickSight before, we got a lot of customers who are using things like Amazon Security Lake, and they're doing different dashboarding for executive summaries, either in this environment before they send other types of data to any sort of, sort of logging solution. But using Amazon Q in QuickSight, you can uh, very easily create dashboards, right? You can ask it questions of, give me a dashboard that shows total findings for a particular uh, type of finding, right, if it's from Security Hub or Inspector or Guard Duty, and it will actually build these dashboards for you, and you don't have to worry about, like, 
matching up the exact labels and the different data sources and understanding the underlying data to start getting visualizations to start actually understanding the security data that you have in your environment. Right? And if it doesn't give you the dashboard you want right away, you just continue to ask it questions. Hey, I like this, but tweak it this way, right? And if you can get to uh, better dashboarding a lot, a lot more effectively. Some other components to this is being able to uh, get it to tell you about the underlying data. So there's the concept of these different data stories. You can ask it to tell you all about the underlying data. And then it will write up a, a, a summary of the data, the underlying data, as well as giving visualizations throughout that. So you can build these like nice reports based on the data set that, that you have, right? Whether this is from Security Lake or any other data set that, that you're pumping into this. And then finally, uh, asking questions about this, right? So maybe you've got somebody who's trying to make sense of this data. Maybe you've got, it's more of an executive level type of dashboarding and they're not gonna go dive into queries, but they have access to these dashboards and you're helping with visualizations. Uh, they can easily ask questions about this data. So if you look at this example, findings over time that are not resolved, right? So it can give us some information about what are these findings that weren't resolved in our environment. Um, explain this dashboard to me, explain the underlying data set. It can give you uh, access into this without needing to perform any like advanced querying of this, uh, of this data. So if you haven't seen this or, or, or used it in QuickSight, uh, I would definitely recommend this. It makes getting value out of analytics and getting out of value out of your security data a lot more efficient and a lot more effective. And then the last one we'll talk about is uh, not something that's built into a particular service, but more of a custom thing that, that most people do. I'm sure at this point in time, a lot of people have seen different chatbot solutions that you can deploy with, uh, with a generative AI technology. Um, but essentially the concept is being some sort of security assistant. I know I have a lot of customers ask me about uh, doing this as well, but just something that would give you hey, I would like to not only have access to ask, you know, an LLM questions, but I also wanted to have the context of my environment. Uh, maybe it's some sort of internal docs. Maybe it's those underlying uh, log sources so that you can ask it questions and get, like, relevant context, right? Not just a generic question or not just a generic answer, but you know, context about your environment, maybe your internal processes, internal knowledge bases um, uh, with that as well, too. Um, so if you think about the architecture behind something like this, one thing I want to point out uh, is uh, pretty straightforward, right, is this is probably something that we've all seen before, I think two years ago or longer than that, right? It, it's just a serverless application. So it's CloudFront as the, the front end, right? We have API Gateway that's piping to Lambda and Step Functions for orchestration and DynamoDB for some, some state management. Uh, and then Cognito for identity and some uh, static website hosting in S3. That's all probably very familiar to everybody, right? The only thing that is even getting added onto this is the components on the left side, or the right side, I'm sorry, is, you know, API calls to Bedrock. That's really all we're talking about here. It's a different SDK call from Lambda to uh, the Bedrock API to interact with those models. Now, Bedrock has... Uh, different features for bringing in the, those log files or bringing in other data that you want to, um, so that L, have the LLM have knowledge of, using things like Kindra and OpenSearch that are managed by Bedrock, so it's not something you have to go you know, deploy independently of that and connect it all together or anything. Um, it handles all that for you, so really all we're talking about is a couple more API calls and a Lambda function, and now we can take advantage of something like this virtual assistant without needing to, we're not reinventing the wheel here, right? Um, it's something a lot of us are pretty familiar with and something that has been, uh, something people have been doing for, for quite some time. All right, and with that, I'll hand it back over to Manchu to uh, give us a summarize. Yeah, thanks, Marshall. So um, I think when we look at uh, these advantages, there's really two categories where all of these fall in. One is where you are essentially using an enterprise application that has some of these features built in, or as a builder persona, you're actually building some of these things using the building blocks and then uh, providing security outcomes. 
just to highlight, I think, some of the things that we talked about. First and foremost, uh, Amazon Inspector and Amazon Q that include code scans as well as security scans that can help the development teams to not only know exactly where the vulnerabilities are or where the security issues are, but also provide them with remediation recommendations that can easily be plugged in to address uh, and um, you know, remediate some of those uh, codes. Secondly, Amazon Q Developer and Amazon Q Business. So Amazon Q is essentially the generative AI-powered application that customers can leverage both for the developer experience as well as for the business experience, which when plugged in over on top of data sources like Amazon Security Lake can provide security teams with key outcomes and automation. Um, I think Marshall mentioned the ability to bring in a lot of the findings or the detections from AWS security services like GuardDuty, which is our primary threat detection service, or Inspector, which is our vulnerability management service, or Security Hub, from where customers often bring findings from configuration or misconfigurations. Uh, all of these findings today are available uh, in Detective, which is where customers go in and not only view the aggregated view, but also how they might be correlated to each other. So whether you're traversing an IP address and looking at where its threat path was, or you're trying to like find uh, the MITRE attack framework uh, graph, and then you're trying to look at what all resources, like instances or container images, are impacted by that particular uh, threat, you can actually now, in Detective, use the generative AI-powered finding group summary, which is what Marshall highlighted earlier, where not only does it provide you a summary of what all findings are associated with a resource, but also provides you like natural language summary of saying, these are the key areas where you should prioritize the next actions uh, to actually address those particular issues. So that's how detectives including that Gen AI feature uh, with finding summary. And then um, at the helm of generative AI is all about data. Uh, so I think we wanted to make sure that how can customers aggregate and collect the security-relevant data, which is essentially logs associated with various different applications, easily and centralize them, first and foremost. Uh, typically what happens is that we are seeing that customers were sending all of this log information in multiple different disparate tools, and then one, losing access to that data. And then secondly, because that data and information was in so many different proprietary formats, uh, they were actually not able to act on that or use, like, for example, Gen AI and then build Gen AI applications and tools on top of that data. So with Amazon Security Lake, we've made it easier now for customers to aggregate, centralize all that data into their own S3 Lake Formation account and also automatically normalize all that data into a standard schema format, which is the open cybersecurity schema framework. So Security Lake helps aggregate all that log data, not only from AWS log sources, but also non-AWS log sources. And then once that data is there, now customers can easily apply uh, you know, tools like Amazon Bedrock or uh, SageMaker on top to build their own generative AI assistants or applications. So these are the uh, few examples or five key outcomes that we believe customers can leverage today uh, and automate their security outcomes. So with that, thanks a lot for joining this session. Uh, like I said, you know, there'll be plenty of other sessions covering uh, all these three use cases throughout uh, Reinforce. Uh, please go ahead and, and give them a look. Thank you.